We are Georgia and David. In March of 2022, we quit our jobs to travel the world full time. We are currently exploring Mexico, and our goal is to visit 100 Pueblos Mexicos. Today we drove about 45 minutes to Cascada El Saltito. Now, we did read online that uh, it's dry for a few months of the year, uh, including this month, mm -hmm. um, right up into the rainy season. Uh, it is currently uh, towards the end of May. Um, the entrance fee was 15 pesos per person, mm -hmm. so we figured we might as well stop by and check it out, even if it is dry, since it is on the way to, and one of the main things to see in our 94th Pueblo Mágico, Nombre de Dios. Well, even if it is dry, I think it's totally worth coming to. Yeah. Uh, it's beautiful, and the water uh, down beneath is just this super deep, gorgeous emerald green color. Really pretty. Yeah. There's some stairs over here you can go down if you want to hike down to see it. But since there is no waterfall right now, um, I'm just going to fly the drone to get a different perspective of it. You can tell that this place is really popular when there is water, since there are a bunch of michelada and snack stalls that are currently closed. Now you've driven an extra 15 minutes into the centro of Nombre de Dios. Now the thing to eat in this town is gorditas and we are getting hungry, it's a little bit afternoon. So we're heading into this restaurant here which is one of the top rated places to get them. Well, that didn't work out. Um, even though it clearly says gorditas, we went inside and they said they didn't have any gorditas. So we are going to try to find a plan B. Wow, those gorditas were the best we've ever had in Mexico. Yeah, I don't know how they yeah. do it, but they were Magic. super delicious. They weren't soggy at all. They were nice and crispy and freshly made on the outside. All of the fillings were super well seasoned, very fresh. Uh, in total, we had eight gorditas. We ended up trying five different flavors and they were all really good. But the best thing of all, they were only 10 pesos each. The waters were also 10 pesos each. So even though we had eight gorditas and five bottles of water, our grand total was only 130 pesos. So if you come to this town, we absolutely recommend going there. And I'm really glad actually that the first place didn't end up working out. Well, now the next thing we're gonna do is check out this town's four churches. We were able to enter two out of the four churches, and the other thing that this town is known for, uh, along with its gorditas, is its mezcal. So now we stopped at Venita de Janos, which is a fabrica or a factory of mezcal. Uh, no one is here right now, but the next door neighbor is trying to call the person that runs this place. We are here on a Tuesday. I'm guessing it would probably be a little easier on the weekend, but there also is a contact number here behind us in the door where it says, see, sí, I'm mezcal.
So we highly recommend stopping by that mezcal factory. Uh, the people are very friendly, the tour is very informative, and the mezcal was delicious. Yes, we got a bottle for just 200 pesos. Uh, the most expensive bottle was 500, but that is a specialty kind that is only uh, actually made like twice a year. So they didn't have any of that one available, but really delicious stuff. It's super hot though, so I think we're gonna reward ourselves with a quick ice cream at La Michoacana before we head back to Durango. This morning we got up bright and early and make an hour and a half drive to Parque Nacional Sierra de Organos. And as you can see behind us right now, this park is known for its really cool rock formations. Um, some say they look like the pipes uh, on an organ, and others say that it looks like the arms on the organo cactus. But either way, very, very cool. We're going to go ahead and start our hike. Entrance into the park was only 50 pesos per person, and we're the only ones here. So we tried to find some hiking trail maps online, couldn't find any. Uh, there are some clearly marked paths though. Uh, unfortunately, we don't know what we're looking at most of the time. Uh, in this case though, I do. Uh, I saw another YouTube video and this is called El Campanario, uh, which means the bell tower. And it is this cool stone structure that you can actually like climb up into. It is very impressive. So we made it to El Mirador, and as the name suggests, we got some amazing views up here. Yeah, one thing I definitely recommend though is bringing water. Oh, yeah. uh, this is a very desert climate, so as you're climbing up these hills and these rock formations, your mouth gets dry really quickly. Uh, also, you need to, need to wear some sunscreen or a hat because there's not much shade on these trails. So we think the structure behind us now is called La Copa. We watched a couple of YouTube videos and this looks very similar to a structure that people were saying was the Copa. Uh, again, there aren't really any signs here. Uh, the trail that we're on, we're hoping it loop, loops back to the parking lot, but we'll, uh, we'll let you know if it does. Well, on second thought, I'm pretty sure that this is actually La Copa. Yeah, all the structures kind of uh, blur together after a little while. Yep. So 
So as you can see, we made it back to the Jeep, the trail did loop around, and we actually saw a sign that had a map on it. Yeah, uh, so how we ended up going, uh, and it actually is the route I would suggest taking, is we started on what is called the El Campanario loop. And then that loop, kind of, as it's getting ready to loop back around, there's another trail. We took that trail, and that mm -hmm. is the El Mirador loop. And on that one, obviously, is El Mirador, as well as La Copa, just as you finish it. Um, it did take us about an hour and 40 minutes to do the entire loop. It says that the Campanario hike is easy and it says that the uh, Mirador hike is medium difficulty. There is a third loop, but that one says that you have to have a guide to do it because it goes through a cave. Uh, but this was a very, very cool mm -hmm. experience. Definitely worth doing. And uh, I think David's going to take the drone up and uh, get some uh, different perspective on it. We've driven an additional 30 minutes down the road to the Pueblo Mágico of San Barreto. Uh, this Pueblo Mágico is known not just for that cool uh, national park that we were just at, but also for its unique dishes. Uh, so we're going to go and get some now because we worked up an appetite after that hike. So the dish that we have in front of us now is called a patata. And if you look here, you can see there is like a ton of melted cheese on this side, and then we've got meat and onions and cilantro and they are fried like super crispy on the flat top grill. So haven't had these before, but they look delicious. Wow, so those patatas were delicious. Uh, the closest thing I can think of, they would be like kind of a queso birria type thing, but the, um, the shell on the outside was a lot different. Yeah, it was like almost like a crispy, thin crust pizza mm -hmm. kind of texture. And then the inside had lots of melted cheese and greasy meat and super good. Their salsas were all homemade and delicious as well. And best of all was the price. Uh, it was only 75 pesos for an order of three. Uh, and then we actually ended up ordering six bottles of water. Uh, then the water was only 10 pesos each. So great deal. Um, we are getting ready to check out the ex convento behind us now and then we'll be heading to try another uh, local specialty Another specialty of San Barrete is the taco de papel, or paper taco. It gets its name from the paper-thin tortilla that is then fried crispy. So it is a Sunday and the main church was having service. But we were able to grab our photo in front of the letters outside and I really love the letters here. They're very beautiful. Um, the church behind us now, I think they're also doing something in there, but we're gonna go try to check it out. And then I think it might be time for a drink.
So we got vampy chelas, which are, as the name suggests, a mix between a vampiro and a michelada. So we got carta blanca beer, and then there's fresh lime juice and fresh orange juice, as well as a little bit of tomato juice and a little bit of tahini to give it a little bit of spice. It is super delicious, and these are only 55 pesos each. So the last food I'm going to try here was supposed to be uh, burritas, which are supposed to be kind of like a little empanada. Uh, but as you see behind me, the restaurant is closed. Thanks for watching. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them down below. If you haven't already, check out last week's video where we explore the Pueblo Magicos of Real de Catorce and Tula.